Welcome back to the class on HVDC transmission system. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the firing angle control for HVDC converters. In HVDC system, the rectifier station as, as well as inverter stations are there. So generally, the rectifier station we are operating with a constant current control, whereas inverter station we are operating with a constant acceleration angle control. These two controls are very closely linking with the, how the firing pulses are generated to the converter. So when you are going to generate a firing pulses, it has a, some basic requirements. The first one is that the firing pulses are generated at a ground potential. It will be transmitted to the fiber optic cable to the wall. The required potential is given to the wall by means of a driver circuit. The second one is that when the gate signal is adequate, then the gate pulse generator should be available to give the firing pulse to the SCR or valves whenever it is required. When you are going to operate the DC voltage, the transience occurs due to the DC voltage should be less than the holding current. The firing angle control is broadly divided into two types. One is individual phase angle control. Another one is the equidistance pulse control. Now we are going to see the individual phase angle control. In the name itself, it is the individual phase angle. So the firing pulse which is generated to the each phase is independent. That's why we are calling as a individual phase angle control. The firing pulse are rigidly synchronizing with a commutated voltage. There are two types are there under the individual firing angle control. One is the constant alpha control. Another one is the inverse cosine control. Now we are going to see the constant alpha control. This is the block diagram to generate a constant alpha control. This is the transformer. The transformer we are connecting to the buses before the converter so that we are getting the six line voltages. The six line voltages we are giving to the zero crossing detector. Nothing but the main function of this zero crossing detector is it giving you pulses whenever the voltage is crossing the zero in this manner. The VC is nothing but a control voltage. Now based upon the control voltage, the firing pulse will be generated to the respective wall. So in this manner, we are generating the pulses to the walls in a constant alpha control. Inverse cosine angle control. It is almost all similar to the constant alpha control. Only thing is, what are the six line voltages we are generating by means of a transformer through the buses before the converter? Those voltages we are shifting by the 90 degrees and that voltage will be added to the control voltage. So whenever this voltage, the shifted voltage and control voltage is intersecting, at that point, the firing angle will be generated. So this is the voltage before the converter. This is the 90 degrees phase shift of this voltage by means of this circuit. Now for this voltage, we are comparing with a VC. So this is the point at which the pulses will be generated to the walls in case of a inverse cosine angle control. It is depending upon the magnitude and shape of a AC voltage. The main disadvantage of this scheme is that the average voltage across the bridge varies linearly with a control voltage. In this scheme, it is essentially may, you have to maintain the 90 degrees phase shift as a variation of the frequency. Equidistance pulse control. In this method, the pulses are generated at equal interval of time, that is 1 by PEF, where F is nothing but a, the frequency of a system through the ringing circuit. This is first suggested by the Envis board using a phase lock oscillator to generate a firing pulses. The equidistance pulse control has a three types. One is the pulse frequency control, second one is the pulse period control, third one is the pulse phase control. Pulse frequency control, we are using the oscillator, by means of that oscillator, we are generating the, this is the oscillator, which is consisting integrator, comparator, or pulse generator. The VC is nothing but a control voltage. The control voltage will be derived based upon the current and extension and the DC voltage angle. It is only deciding the frequency to the pulses. The output of voltage control oscillator is giving a ringing circuit which is generating a pulses to the wall, it also will be resetting the integrator. Pulse frequency control as a integral characteristics, it is used along with a 
feedback control system for the stabilization. At a firing instant, the pulse is calculated as follows integral T n minus 1 to T n K1 into Vc plus V1 into dt equal to V3. Where Vc is nothing but a control voltage, V1 is nothing but a bias voltage, whereas V3 is, is proportional to the system period. In a steady state, Vc is equal to 0. Suppose in this integration, if you make the Vc equal to 0, if you complete the integration, then we are getting the Kv1 into Tn minus T n minus 1 equal to V3. We know that Tn minus T n minus 1 equal to 1 by P f naught. In this place, if you substitute this equation, then you have to calculate the value of gain K1. In the above block diagram, if any frequency deviations are there, that is not into taking into consideration of the block diagram. Suppose any frequency deviations are there in a system, that we can take into consideration when you are going to generate a pulses to the wall, that is happening only based upon the block diagram. See, V3 we have to generate in this manner. The V1 has to give the integration. This is the sample hold block. This is the delay block. The output of this one is the V3. Now we are going to find out the V3. If we take this voltage is the V2. V3 equal to V2 into 1 by 1 plus ST1. Here, this is the equation which is related to the V2, nothing but output of a integrator. Now, substitute this one in the above equation, you are getting the V3 value. V3 equal to K1 V1 into Tn minus Tn minus 1 by 1 plus ST1. Now, this is the voltage, V3 voltage that we have taken in the above block diagram, what you have seen previously. Then, if any frequency deviations are there, due to any disturbance in the system that will also be will be taken into consideration of the pulse generated to the wall. <coughs> pulse periodic control. The pulse periodic control almost all similar to the pulse frequency control except how we are going to handle the control voltage. Now this control voltage we are added to the V3 in this case of a pulse periodic control. So now the firing instant of the pulse is calculated as follows integral Tn minus 1 to Tn k1 into v1 d2 equal to v3 plus vc where v1 is nothing but a bias voltage v3 is proportional to the system period vc is nothing but a control voltage in a steady state the control voltage is zero now you complete the this integration we are getting the k1 v1 into tn minus tn minus 1 equal to v3 plus vc vc in a steady state the control voltage is zero now the period between the two successive pulses becomes a 1 by P F naught that we can see here. This is the triangular waveform. This, this is the V3. V3 we are equating 0. So when out this triangle is reaching this one at the distance, the pulse will be generated. So the distance between the any two successive pulses is same that is equal to 1 by P F naught. Suppose if the control voltage is exponentially decaying voltage that is added to this one means this is the control voltage. When we are adding this one, this line will be shifted to upwards. So what are the pulses we are generating between the T1 and T2? The distance between the pulses will be affected, not equal, based upon the frequency deviation. Whenever the frequency is deviated means the control voltage is coming to the picture. In that duration, the distance between the pulses also will be affected. In this manner, in a pulse period control, we are generating pulses to the wall even though frequency is deviated. Thank you very much for watching this video.